Despite it having been over five years since the last balance patch for Team Fortress 2, I would say that when it comes to the balance of the game, it is the best it's been. But that doesn't mean it's all good, as there's still plenty of issues when it comes to certain weapons, or even quirks of certain classes. Because of this, having always been a prevalent issue within the game, there have been people over the years who have tried to rebalance the game in their own way, with the latest one being the YouTuber Fish on a Stick and his programmer Silver. For those who don't know him, Fish is a TF2 YouTuber who is most prominently known for his Bad Weapons Academy series, where he reviews lesser good weapons in the game, and at the end of the video he tries to explain what he'd do to change them up. Lately, him and Silver have been running a project on TF2 called Bad Weapon Rehabilitation, where they tweak weapons and sometimes class quirks to improve them in their own vision. And that's what I've been here to review today. How good is the balancing on Fish and a Stick servers? In this video, I will talk about my general overview and thoughts on the changes for each class, what my favorite and least favorite weapons are, and try to highlight some important and interesting changes when I can, though there will be some things I'd like to let you guys know before we start. As with any project, they are subject to change at any time, and by the time this video is out, they'll probably have been changed even more so. Along with that, I will be showcasing the changes from the website of each overview for you guys to pause and look at what was tweaked while I talk. Also, to add on to this, when it came to playing on the servers, I'll admit, I haven't given every class as much attention to one another, as my least played classes on here are Sniper and Spy, with me having less to say on the latter. With that out of the way, let's get the video started. Starting with the Scout, I think a lot of the changes seem good with at least some changes being interesting. The Babyface's blaster actually feels less punishing to use and worth using more, since not only did they nullify fall damage making you lose your boost, but also it now takes 50 damage to remove it, while also making it lose 50% when double jumping, though I'd still recommend using the Bonk just in case. It's a weapon I've spent the most amount of time on, and I'd recommend others to give it a shot. The Force of Nature giving it an accuracy bonus on its first hit is something I'm all for, since normally you'd have a 50-50 chance of either killing the opponent I just send them off far off to retreat. But with this, it definitely feels like a quality of life change, as well as the firing speed to help with that. I know that some people are going to be upset that the Mad Milk and a certain other weapon now run on the gas past the recharge system, but honestly, I think it's better this way, and since you're going to be out there dishing damage, with it taking 500 damage in 40 seconds to build up the meter, I don't think it's worth complaining about, since it changes it from being a spammable like it usually was. Also, I can't forget about the Sandman, with the slowdown effect being changed to Mark for Death 1, making it infinitely more viable than its current iteration. And the same can be said for the Candy Cane, having its explosive vulnerability removed, and replaced with an overall penalty and less healing from wearers. Now, onto the more interesting weapons. The Backscatter has been known to be a very gimmicky scattergun that rewards you by getting behind enemy lines, but in the current iteration, instead of reducing the clip size to 4, it got up to 8, which to me seems kind of odd. Oh hey! Future me butting in during the later editing. Uh, that little, uh, eclipse size deal thing? Yeah, that shit's gone. Told you this video was gonna be out of date by the time it's released. For the most interesting of the bunch, that being the Soda Popper, this weapon ended up being changed so that instead of you building up hype through damage to quadruple jump, you regain your jumps through dealing 30 damage, and when trying it out, it's kinda baffling in a bad way. Like, did the Soda Popper really need any changes outside of the slower reload speed? I feel like outside of that reload speed tweak, there didn't really need to be any changing of how the jump system worked for it. Personally, I'm not a fan of how it is. With a class that's as well-rounded as the Soldier, you'd think he wouldn't get much tweaking outside of some basic stuff like the Righteous Bison or the Liberty Launcher, and while they did get changed up for the better, the server decided to up the ante on various other things I didn't think needed any changes. The Blast Radius being removed on the Airstrike is a pretty nice change, as well as giving the buff banner some extra ammo as a plus. I know that some people might think that giving a banner that used extra ammo might be too much, but from what I've tried with it, it's not really that bad. It really helps if you want to go for a Liberty Launcher or Airstrike combo. The Mantred's got a buff that I am super happy with. I'm not even a person who really uses the boots in general as whenever I did use it before, I always felt that despite all the bonuses it had going with it, it having something not as powerful of an upside as negating blast damage or rocket jumping always felt off to me, making it a lesser competitor, and it having this upside is something I think puts it on par with it. 
There's also the panic attack, getting a slight rework that makes it more akin to its namesake by making it have a faster alt fire. At the cost of having four shots rather than six, of course. I can understand some people also thinking that the panic attack is fine and didn't need changes either, but as someone who has seen the panic attack progress throughout its years, I think the last iteration of the panic attack was good before they decided to change it entirely to what it is now. Personally, I would have preferred if Valve did an equalizer situation where they let the panic attack keep its last state iteration while giving a new shotgun the stats we have now, but eh, it is what it is. Now Pyro got a handful of changes, with two being how the class functions, so we'll start off with that. How Pyro's flame particles worked, that was changed completely, with how the compression blast spam is dealt with. I'm not one to understand how the flame particles work, so I won't go into that, but the napalm effect that is added for the Pyro's flamethrowers is one that I have seen and know more about compared to the first bit. And I'll say that, I don't know, whenever I have stepped in it, I barely notice anything happening, so maybe it can be tweaked. As for the compression blast tweaking, this is something I'm fine with, as it can be annoying to deal with Pyro spamming it. And alongside that comes an experimental change that lets you shoot yourself off the ground akin to a detonator jump. I know some people might be thinking this will ruin the detonator's gimmick, but honestly it doesn't, as it adds more variety to Pyro's movement options. So you can use a regular flamethrower to compression jump and still get use out of the detonator. Also, I'm going to quickly get these two out of the way since I imagine there's definitely going to be people wanting to hear about how these two infamous weapons were changed, and I'll start off with the Fulgistinator. As you can see here, one of its big changes is that it now has an alt fire mechanic akin to an air blast where it can extinguish players, and instead of reflecting projectiles, it just erases them. So since it behaved this way, you can't just spam it like your usual air blast. Also, to help with that, if you remove any projectiles or extinguish any players, you get 10% oomph added to your meter. Speaking of, if you fill up your oomph meter and use it, your taunt speed will not only be increased, but your crits are turned into mini crits no matter what. And you do 30% more damage. In my opinion, I'm liking what is done here with the flog, making it more technical rather than its current iteration. Though, if I can give one piece of criticism, it's that while I haven't experienced any of those people in the server, you know, the people who spam scorch shots with the flog, possibly have a pocket uber med that destroys the server with them. I think it'd be best to make it so that when holding out the flog, you cannot be ubered whatsoever just to prevent that, since that's one of the biggest reasons why people hate the weapon so much. Speaking of, the score shot to no one's surprise got rebalanced too, with its biggest changes being that its damage was reduced, as well as its knockback on hit being completely removed. So now you can't just fire out endless shots with it and bounce people, especially those pesky god tier sniper mans who got it coming. Either way, with my experience of it, I feel less guilty when using it due to the knockback being removed, but I do feel it is still as spammy as it was before. And if I can suggest something, I think it'd be good to have its ammo count go from 16 to 10 to lessen that effect. Now here's the part where I start gushing over my favorite changes done in this, since honestly, while I'm not a pyro main, he is the class I've spent the most amount of time on this server, next to Medic. The items I've used the most on him in the rebalance server are the Gas Passer and the Neon Annihilator. As you know, for some godforsaken reason, probably and hopefully an oversight, when Valve made the Gas Passer, despite it being a canister filled with gasoline, and something you can use to soak players with, they did not give it the wet attribute, meaning you cannot pair it with the Neon Annihilator. The one use you could actually get out of this, and having it be a somewhat viable option by pairing it with this weapon became lost. Luckily, not only does it get the attribute, so they can be paired, but the Gas Passer also got tweaked in several ways. The damage threshold to fill up the meter went up from 750 down to 500, or from 1 minute down to 40 seconds, making it less severe to fill up. It also has an effect where you can douse other players with the cloud to remove Afterburn, Jurati, and Mad Milk, and making it recharge faster if that happens. The last upside to it might possibly give people PTSD from just hearing it, but let me tell you that with how it is, it's not really bad and doesn't break it, as if a player is hit when doused. It'll not only set them on fire, but it'll do an explosive that does 20 damage, which doesn't really ruin the weapon, and is a nice little upside to it rather than just a basic ignition that you can easily do with literally any other weapon. Though to give it a downside, if you die and respawn, the meter always resets to zero, so watch what you do. Now onto the Neon Annihilator, a weapon that got a huge glow up from the very niche melee weapon wasting space in your inventory. 
Instead of it being the inverse of the extinguisher, it got some added changes to it while still keeping the point of the weapon intact. To start with the positives, it now has a longer melee reach and has an explosive first hit, doing about 80 damage alongside the 52 you normally do, adding up to 132 damage, meaning you can one-shot any light class with it. Alongside that are obvious downsides such as the slower draw speed, the explosive first hit taking 40 seconds to respawn, and the sapper ability it had been removed. Speaking of that explosive hit, since it pairs with the gas passer, you can do some insane damage with it, leading up to almost 400 damage, which is just... yeah, that's way too much. Now, I don't know about coding for TF2 at all, but if I can offer a suggestion, it's to make the highest damage possible with the gas passer combo be somewhere around maybe 250 or something. So that way, some classes such as overhealed demomen, soldiers, and pyros can survive with a sliver of health. I like the idea of it being a caper-esque weapon, and this combo is one of the most fun things to come from the server. But yeah, please tweak that sometime if you can. Now on to the other weapons. The Man Melter interestingly got a buff where if someone's on fire and it hits someone on fire, you gain a crit. As well as it's showing a reload animation on the side, instead of relying on the tick you hear. To make up for these upsides, your afterburn duration is lowered considerably, alongside the damage output. This is a fine change though. While I know people don't think it's good, I think it'd be aight if you want to go for possible quicker projectile harassment and other classes from afar due to the speed, as well as it possibly being paired with the Dragon's Fury if there is someone on your team that is on fire. The Homewrecker tries to fit its bill of being a sentry buster by giving it some extra added buffs to it while also giving it some nerfs to make it not so powerful. This is fine from what I've tried, despite it being very little. As for the second to last weapons, I tried more of the Sharpened Volcano Fragment recently on the server, despite it being mainly on a medieval mode, and holy shit is it pretty good. It does mini crit damage when they become a walking volcano, and causes an explosion on death, possibly damaging others around them. It feels infinitely more useful to use than it has ever been in its entirety in the game. Though I should use it more outside of that game mode to see how it goes. Also, I'd like to note that it can even ignite enemy pyros, so yeah, try that out. Before we head out, the Hot Hand seems like an interesting weapon to pair with other flamethrowers, as its damage penalty is removed, both slaps connecting giving you a crit, and the second boost going on from 1 second to 3. I tried this with the Dragon's Fury, and it honestly seems like it'd be a good way to make use of it, being an invasive speedy pyro to get more hits on your opponents. I recommend trying it out. The Demo Man is in the same situation when it comes to the Soldier, where only a small bit of his arsenal is bad, but both that and their normal weapons got touched up. The most interesting to me are what was done to the Lock and Load, Iron Bomber, and the Eyelander. So if you know by now, back in the day the Lock and Load was considered quote unquote too powerful, because it could one-shot light classes, despite the direct hit being able to do that too, even though the reason it could do that was because of a mechanic hidden in plain sight, being random damage spread. Yes, because Valve tried to ride the coattails of the competitive scene with TF2, they had a command running on their servers that allowed damage spread to either do more or less for some godforsaken reason. And because of that, people hated the weapon to the point where it got neutered to be a sentry buster, despite it doing 120 damage if the command was removed, pretty much character assassinating the weapon. In this mod, however, it doesn't bring back the damage bonus, but makes up for it by making it more akin to the direct hit by making it midi crit on airborne opponents, as well as reverting its ammo clip back to 2, but giving it a faster firing speed and slower reload that puts in both shots at once, rather than one at a time. I know there's a minus 25% explosion radius, but honestly I kind of forgot that stat was there when using it. This is an amazing rework of the lock and load, and it's something I wish made its way to the real game, but we all know Valve doesn't want to do Blue Moon-esque updates anymore, so we can just dream it did instead. There's also the rework to the Iron Bomber that turns it more into a mind lobber that explodes around enemies or yourself, and made them last longer too. I know some people might be upset at the change of turning the Iron Bomber into what it is here on the server, but let's be honest, it's a straight upgrade to the stock in practically every way. The explosion radius penalty barely means a thing when you have your rollers explode sooner and use them to properly pill hop, so I'm fine with this. The Eyelander is a weapon that I know a handful of people are annoyed at because of how hard it can snowball in the right hands. And while I'm an average demo knight and don't consider myself super skilled at it, I have gotten high rolls with huge headcounts and felt like a monster with it at points. 
though that's usually because of picking off lesser skilled players or catching people with low health off guard. While it is fun to get the health adrenaline rush of feeling like an absolute beast with it, I can understand the counter argument of it being too powerful at times, despite it being on a class who trades their sustained burst damage with an easily spammable weapon with a more melee oriented playstyle. And because of that, the server changes how it works to deal with that issue by reworking it entirely. So with how it works now, is that it's practically the big earner for demo. But to go in more detail, it removes the health penalty, letting you go up to 200 health with it, and the head system counts more damage on shield bashers rather than healing you, but at the cost of having a 25% slower shield recharge. When testing this out plenty of times, it's not that bad. Sure, I can imagine there being some dudes getting upset that they can't constantly be healed from killing people from it, along with gaining a larger health pool. But if you wanted to get healed from killing people, why don't you use the half Sadoichi, since that's its whole point. I feel this version of the Islander is pretty good, not gonna lie. Though I find it off that there's a nerf on the secondary ammo pool because little to no one I've seen use the Islander stacks with the sticky bomb launchers outside of Man vs. Machine, so that's just odd in my eyes. Though, before we move on to Heavy, I know people are going to ask about the Kaber, and since this portion talking about the Demo Man is already as long as it is, and with how much there is going on with the changes, I'm just gonna flash the card for it on screen for a few seconds before we move on. We good? Aight. The Heavy has not only gotten a handful of buffs to his armory, but Silver has changed up the Heavy's minigun variety to make them more interesting than their counterparts. But before that, we should give a quick mention to the changes done to the minigun revving as a whole, with the spin down time being reduced by 50%, making it so that it's nearly half of a second rather than a full second, as well as holstering after winding down being way faster. So I appreciate that. Now onto the miniguns, starting with the Natasha. Throughout its life in the game, its whole gimmick was that it will slow down players if you track them down. Despite this usually being a go-to deal with annoying scout means most of the time, dealing with a weapon that slows you down is not fun. So, Silver decided to change things up by making it a more fleshed out version of the Ludmilla, which, if you don't know what that was, that's what the Natasha was originally, having it give 3 health to heavy with every hit when using the secondary fire. How Silver tackles this is that despite giving it 300 ammo again and making the hits of health up to 5, you lose the damage resistance you had when at 50% health, and the biggest factor is that you gain way less health from healers. From my time using this, it isn't that bad. It definitely helps heavy sustainability in fights without the need for a medic, as usually without a medic you're practically going to be dying a lot. So having this be a self-sustaining minigun rather than it being a slowdown type one is way more interesting for solo heavy gameplay. Along with pairing it up with the launch box to add more to that. The Brass Beast got some simple tweaks that felt so fun to use that I honestly got a strange brass beast just for this server. Its spin-up penalty got reduced to 40%, and the biggest change is that it was brought back with the 25% damage resistance being always up as long as you were revved up. Pair that with the faster spin-down buff, and it feels so much more fun to actually use. It feels good to actually be able to use it outside of Man vs. Machine. The Hulong Heater also got tweaks to it to make its gameplay infinitely more interesting than it just being minigun but it does more damage if someone's on fire. With some additions and changes done to it, are that you can toggle the ring of fire to be on or off by pressing reload. This is nice, but if you decide to kill someone with it on, it'll cause an explosion that sets other enemies on fire if they're around them, allowing you to do extra burning damage to them because of it, though the bonus damage dealt to burning players is reduced to 15%. I haven't gotten to use this much, but from the times I did, I do think this solves the issue of the Hulong heater only being viable if you have a pyro on your team, and it gives it a much better glow up. The Buffalo Steak Sandwich is a weapon that's been notorious for being pretty underpowered. With the devs of TF2 somehow thinking it'd be a good idea to give you a hidden 20% damage penalty for using a weapon that already forces you into melee. But now, it's been changed immensely. I ain't gonna read all the stats on this thing, because look at all these fucking changes. To condense what's changed and for the people who don't want to pause and read it, basically, the damage penalty is replaced with the resistance. You can run faster when using it with the Gru, or the Eviction Notice's speed on hit. You take less knockback, eat faster, and you can swap back to your other weapons if you wanted to, but you get a mark for death afterwards. I've gone with various melee weapons on the server using the stake, and the most busted it feels to use is on the Fists of Steel, since the damage resistance stack up to 55%, and 
That means if your opponents aren't quick enough to realize or don't know that you take more damage from melees when using it, you can go on a rampage with this. It is super fun and really improves upon an already terrible weapon, so thanks for that. The Engineer as it is in current TF2 is already pretty balanced. Sure, there's some underwhelming weaponry in an infamously busted secondary, but that stuff gets touched up in this, along with some things you don't expect to get tweaked, such as the building speed of dispensers and teleporters being boosted by 100%, which is something I never thought needed a buff, but I appreciate it. The biggest glow-ups have to go to the Southern Hospitality and the Pompton 6000. The Southern Hospitality in its normal state is a very underwhelming weapon, letting you make people bleed for 5 seconds if you hit them, while also having a fire vulnerability. Outside of the spy checking use for it, there's really no reason to ever use this. So Silver decides to boost it with a handful of more interesting gameplay changes by making it more befitting of the Turtle Engineer playstyle. This is dealt with by boosting the dispenser range by 450%, reducing the cost of building by 25%, and offsetting this by removing the fire penalty adding a 75% less max battle on the player, and offsetting this down to 175 instead of 200. This is infinitely more interesting of a wrench design than it just being a basic spy checking tool, and I'd be happy if this was in the base game. Now, onto the Pompson 6000, which has never been good since its introduction, due to its projectile being very slow, unreliable, and the fact it drains Spy Cloak and Meta Uber on hit. This has been changed drastically by removing those last two stats, making its clip size, firing speed, and reload speed on par with the stock shotguns. It also has a faster projectile, improved hit detection, and can pass through teammates. From my rare few times of trying this out, it's not that bad. It feels way better to use than it did before, though personally I'd still prefer going for the shotgun. Also, before we move on, since I didn't bring it up yet, the Wrangler got two simple changes for those wondering. It now does 80% less damage when rocket jumping with your sentry, and the 66% damage resistance is now half to 33. I didn't get much time to use it, but it seems better from the looks alone. Medic is what I'd consider to be my main. So, even in this rebalance server, I spent a lot of time playing him. Honestly, I'd say he's my second most played class in the rebalance server alongside Pyro, but besides that, he got some meaningful changes to his weapons, especially to a certain infamous medigun. To begin, we'll start talking about the biggest change to medic, with that being how the syringe guns work. Normally in TF2, they've always been outclassed by the Crusader's crossbow in pretty much every way, seeing as the syringe guns were intentionally made to be bad and used as a retreat tool. I get why they did that, but even then, don't you think that the syringes should have gotten some sort of treatment to make up for their lack of utility? Luckily, that's been done. With the syringe gun's firing speed being boosted by 40%, the spread being decreased by 30, reloading when holstered, and the biggest addition being that firing at your teammates causes the healing rate on your injured opponents to go faster, meaning they get back to full health quicker. I mainly ran the Blute Sauger on the server most of the time with these changes, and when seeing this in action, these really make it for a great contender for the Crusader's crossbow. As with these changes, it's your choice if you want to run any of the needle guns to boost the healing process with your minigun, or go for boost healing from afar. While the quick fix in my eyes seemed balanced as is, it got some slight tweaks to make it befit its role even more so, with it having a higher uber charge rate and the removal of its uber charge drain penalty when switching off patients allowing you to effectively heal more people with the burst healing it provides. To make it not so powerful, the uber lasts about 6 seconds rather than 8. I think this adds a lot more to the quick fix's character, as it allows you to effectively burst heal others in a pinch, at the cost of a smaller uber window. I'm fine with these changes and am happy to see it expanded upon. Now on to the most egregious tool in Medic's kit, the Vaccinator. I love playing Medic, but let me tell you I absolutely despise this medigun. It's like the Scorch Shot, easily spammable, brain dead to use, and in the right hands it's extremely infuriating to fight against. Oh, what's that? You're cornered by the entire enemy team? Well, time to spam uber resistances that gives you and your patient 75% resistance and full crit immunity to basically every single goddamn weapon in the game. I know there's going to be one of those dudes who will just say, just use your melee lamao, 
as if it's that easy to do. While yes, the vaccinator can be countered by bringing a knife to a gunfight, you're still bringing a knife to a gunfight. Put two and two together there, champ. Luckily, with how Silver handles this situation, it pretty much makes it way less scummy to use. And since there's a lot of changes here, in summary, it's become a mix of a vaccinator and an amplifier. The passive 10% damage resistance is now a damage booster. The uber bubbles last longer, but instead of it being always a 75% damage resistance for whatever resist you're on, it just always does a flat resistance with less crit and vulnerability. This makes the least amount of damage you take with one uber being 20%, going all the way up to 60% with three stacked ubers, even allowing you to pop it on yourself and switch to different weapons. After using this for a while in the server, I can say that this feels way better to use and more fair to fight against, rather than the current version we have now, and would recommend other people to try it. Before we move on, I'll be quickly talking about the Ubersaw, a weapon that has been a staple of the medic's arsenal when it comes to getting the best out of playing the class. This weapon is contentious due to how it pretty much overshadows every other melee, being able to random crit people and how little people who use it to farm uber tend to not get punished as much. So with that in mind, Silver tweaked the weapon a bit to fix these issues. For the positives, it now has a faster deploy speed, but at the cost of a slower swing speed, no random crits, and the biggest dealer, a 25% damage vulnerability when active. I can understand that that last ad might be a deal breaker to some people, but despite me not using the uber saw as much on the server as much as the Solemn Vow or Amputator, I think this is a more high risk high reward take on the weapon, and for my looks of it, it seems fine. Now, we move on to the most controversial part of the game, with that being the Sniper. A class many people hate so much that they wish he was removed since he's an outlier to a game whose class's primary attack range are close to mid-range. With him being such a problematic class, Silver decided to do some tweaking of his own to make the class more bearable. Before we get into some of the changes, I'd like to state that Sniper is one of my least played classes. So despite that, I'll try to talk about what I can in some sort of fashion. Starting with the sniper rifle changes as a whole. The rifles have all been tweaked to have 16 ammo rather than 25, along with them now having a clip size instead of it being an endless mag dump. After you empty your clip, you are then forced to reload for about 2 seconds, with the sounds being heard from afar. Now while this does address the issue of sniper being able to constantly fire, it still doesn't fix the biggest issue of sniper as a whole, with that being quick scoping. The reason that sniper is hated so much is not only his ability to attack from afar, along with having backpack tools that are designed to counter specific classes, but the fact that if you're super good at sniper, you can easily spew out 150 damage quick scopes like they're nothing. Hell, I've seen people in both Casual and Uncle Topia who are so good with the class that they push back entire teams because of how oppressive sniper can be when mastered. The fact that the sniper can just quickly zoom in and dish out 150 damage constantly to anyone anywhere on the map is both absurd and not fun to fight against. If I were to give some criticism on how Silver can improve the class on the server, it's to make it so that quick scopes do 125 damage instead, making it so that they can easily deal with light classes and other snipers. So, if you main sniper and you want to get that med pick, you're going to have to stay charged longer to earn it. I know that there will be people who do play the class who would get super mad over this change, but sniper is not a fun class to fight against at all, and a change like this is long overdue. Outside of that, let's talk about some of the weapon changes I feel be worth bringing up. And since there be a handful of changes that be intriguing, I've decided to talk about the backpack items first. The Razorback from its very inception has been an awful weapon whose whole purpose is to screw over the one class that's supposed to be their counter. And because of this, the weapon has been tweaked to fix that. It still gives a sniper 85 damage dealt to him instead, as well as blocking crits or mini crits for a certain amount outside of headshots. This still lets the spy do his shtick while not fully killing them outright, but leaving them at 40 health. Speaking of backpacks where I made to counter people, the Darwin's Danger Shield has also been changed to not be a counter to Pyro by making it reduce the amount of time you get debuffed, as well as giving you a 15 plus health. There is still an afterburn immunity, but it got reduced to 33%. This definitely makes it more reliable and less frustrating to fight against when it comes to both backpack items. I was a bit torn on which weapon to cover last before moving on, so I've decided to cover the Cleaner's Carbine. Normally, no one tends to pick this weapon since you can just use the Jurati, and even if you did want to use it, it feels so sluggish to use that you might as well just go back to the SMG. 
This gets touched up a bit by making its firing speed buff by 5%, giving it a 20% accuracy bonus, and making it so that you can get a little bit of charge meter every time you kill someone with it. With the downside being that you have to do 20 more damage to max it out. I haven't gotten to use it much since I, like I said, I don't really play Sniper, and the times I do I usually prefer using the regular SMG. But from the time I did get to use it, it does seem like a better glow up compared to its current version, so I appreciate that. Now I'm pausing the video here to say that while I would like to talk about the spy, I've had so little time with him that honestly I think it'd be better if I didn't try to force something out, so apologies for anyone wanting my opinions on spy's changes. After my long amount of time playing on the servers, a lot of the changes here feel really like a breath of fresh air, with a lot of the rebalances being mainly good and experimental. Of course, just like any project, stuff changes over time. As Silver continues to spend more time rebalancing weapons on there that don't make their mark. So if you want a change to play on their servers and see how things are yourself, I'll leave a link to both the server IP and the website for you to read the balance changes in the description. Thank you all for watching. This is my first time ever doing a review-esque video on something, despite it being TF2 related. And having made this gives me a bit of confidence to talk more about other stuff I like in the future. I'd like to thank my friend Mitzi Jitsi <laughs> for narrating this video. What do you think of the changes here on the server? Do you like them or do you hate them? Leave a comment below about your experiences with them, and if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, and have a good one.